Okay, we're good to go. So um, you remember from last week, we open a file this way with the file open and we have all the different sample data in this uh, tab. And I'm gonna work with the community areas again, uh, just because it's a simple data set. So we saw the green base map. Last week we saw the table. Table has all the variables in it. And one thing you may not have paid attention, but all these variables are counts. They're number of people, number of people under five, number of people 65 to 74 and so on. There's a basic rule about mapping and I'll talk about this again next week, is that you should avoid to map variables that correlate closely with size. So total number of people um, is the size of the population of each community area. If you look at the population under five, you would think that everything else being the same, areas with more people would also have more people under five, right? So it's a little bit misleading to just map the total count of people under five because the mapping is, is a, a scaling, it's a binning. We'll talk about that next week. So the larger areas will most likely have more people under five. That doesn't mean that it's a younger population. What you really want to measure is are these community areas, do they have more children or fewer children, right? So what matters is not the total count of under five, but the ratio, the proportion of under five to total population. And in spatial lingo, the difference between these two is called spatially extensive variables and spatially intensive variables. So a total count, like total number under five or total housing units or total number of people employed, those are spatially extensive variables. The way to think about it is everything else being the same, they should be more in larger areas. So that's not useful information, right? The ratio or the percentage or a density, that's a spatially intensive variable. And then you can actually compare them in a meaningful way. So you correct for the size by rescaling them to a ratio, a percentage, a density is like population per area would be population density. That makes sense. You can compare this, right? So what we're gonna do is I'll illustrate the calculator functionality by uh, computing a new variable. We already did this last time. Remember when we had the selection, we could save the selection as a new variable, a zero one variable in the data table. And now we're going to create a new variable uh, as a ratio of the number of children, basically under five over the total population. Now this is very clunky in Geoda. It's great if you only do it once or twice. If you have to do 20 of these, by all means, do it in a spreadsheet or write a script in Python or R or something like that. Uh, you don't wanna do this 20 times. You'll see, you'll see, it's a pain, okay? But if just for quick and dirty work, it's just fine. So uh, we get this going just like last week by right clicking on the table or similarly, you can go in the menu and do table and we start the calculator down here. So you start the calculator, that gives you this clunky calculator interface. One of these days uh, we'll run a demo of Geoda AI Actually, you can check it out. The website is geoda.ai. And there's a new calculator and it's a lot slicker, okay? Uh, but this works. So uh, the first thing you have to do is add a new variable. If you're going to create a new variable, we're gonna create a ratio. So I'm adding a new variable. The type of variable will be a, a real variable. I'm going to call it under five RT. So the rate of under five, 
remember last week I showed you that by default, the new variable gets put to the left here. Now we're going to do a little bit something that makes more sense. I will stick it in here in between these two. So instead of insert before area one, we're going to insert it be before A5 to 19. And that will create an empty column to the right of under five. So we pick this, we do add, and here's our empty column. Right? Now we can calculate. And the calculator has a bunch of different uh, functionalities. Um, special, we'll look at that later. This has can create a normal random variable. So random variable is actually not random. It's, it's an actual equation where you create numbers that are called pseudo random. So they behave as if they're random. So as if they're normally distributed, as if they have a uniform distribution, enumerate creates uh, sequence numbers. And you might say, well, you already have sequence numbers. Why would you want to do that? We'll see why in a few minutes, okay? Then univariate is all kinds of operations like assign, if you want to create a constant, you assign one or a hundred. You want to change the sign, you want to take the inverse square root and so on. An imp important one is standardize where you change a continuous variable into standard deviational units. So the mean becomes zero and the variance becomes one. We'll see this next week when we talk about standard deviational maps, which under the hood will convert the variable to standardized values and then map those. And shuffle, um, we'll talk about next week. Shuffle uh, randomly reshuffles um, the variables. So it takes the same variables and it puts them in a different location. I'll show this next week as a basic difference between non-spatial analysis and spatial analysis. And just to run ahead, what I'm gonna do is show you a histogram and then a map. And then we're gonna shuffle the variables Histogram is not gonna change, the map is gonna change. And so that's the difference between a spatial perspective and a non-spatial perspective. In a spatial perspective, we look at the where. Where do these things happen? So uh, the rest is just some other standardization. Bivariate are just anything that needs two operators. So this is what we're gonna to use to do our ratio. Spatial lag uh, is for spatial correlation. We won't talk about that. Rates, we won't talk about. And date time is kind of advanced manipulations. If you work with data a lot, you know that dates and time are a pain in the neck because they're, they're standards, but they're different standards and to convert one to the other. So we have some functionality for that in here. But let's uh, get back to our uh, rate variable. So we... It's going to be on the left-hand side of the equation sign. We, we go down here and we pick it out. So this is under five rate. And then you see it in here in this little dialog, it shows up on the left-hand side of the equation sign. And we're going to take our under five count right here and divide it, not add, we're going to do divide by total population, this one, okay? So this is the expression that we have in the calculator. And when we apply this, look at this column, as soon as I click apply, it's gonna get populated. So there are the rates. Okay. And then it's not gonna work because it's a sample data set, but if you do this in your own working directory, you save it to keep the new variable. If you don't save it, it's gone, okay? Um, okay, so what I wanted to show you is kind of running ahead, but it's uh, it will save me time next week. 
I'm going to take a quantile map with six categories. So just go to the map icon or the map menu, pick quantile and six. I'll explain next week what exactly this is. Basically, it's going to sort the data and put them in six bins. And we're going to map the original under five. Okay, So you pick the variable under five and then do OK. And if you do that, you get what is called a quantile map. And the darker parts have more children under five than the lighter parts. OK. So you might say, oh, there's a lot of children under five up here, right? And there are, but that's not what matters. What matters is how many are there relative to the total population. So we can do the same thing now and make a map of the total population. So we go back to the map icon and we go down, quantile map, six again, but now we pick as our variable total population. And you see that some of these areas that have a lot of kids also have a lot of people. So it doesn't really give us a good indication. The spatially extensive variable, this one here, doesn't really give us a good indication of where there are more kids. Or if you're interested in old people, you could do it with the old people. Right. So instead, we will be mapping our rate that we just constructed. Same thing again, quantile map down to six. And we take the rate under five rate. And now you see the picture is quite different. Because here, these areas that have a lot of children also have a lot of people. And actually, they don't have any children relative to the total population. So you see, and this will come back over and over again, how if you don't control for size, you can have a totally misleading impression of the spatial distribution. Sure, there are lots of kids in these particular community areas, but there are also lots of people. Okay, And we'll have the same thing uh, later today when we look at the carjackings. In some places, there are a lot of carjackings, but there's also a lot of people, meaning there's a lot of cars. So if there's a lot of cars and the risk is the same everywhere, you would have more carjackings, everything else being the same. This is very relevant when you look at things like crime rates or disease incidents. You know, you're looking for cancer clusters. Where there's more people, there's going to be more cancer. Does that mean there's a higher risk of cancer? Not necessarily. You have to control for the size of what is called the population at risk. Okay, So that is a very important principle. I have a whole chapter in the book devoted to mapping rates. We won't go there, but you can look it up if you want to. So this is just to show you the calculator. Uh, very important. Again, as I said, if you only do once or twice, you can easily do it in Geoda. If you're going to do 20 of these, don't do it in Geoda, unless you have nothing else to do. Right. Um, so let me close this. I'm going to kill this. Uh, I don't want to save my data. And then I'm going to reopen it just to start from scratch. So we're back into community areas. And, um, oh, shoot, I made a mistake. I should have saved it. So I'll do this real quickly. Uh, close your eyes. Five, divide. Okay, now we're back in business. So um, 
one thing you can do in the table is let's move to under five is that you can resize these things i uh, probably looks a little different in your screen the table has a built-in ranking system so if you click on this top tab you'll see a larger than sign if you click on it again so the um, first observation is 0 0.0174 then it goes up then it goes up then it goes up so these are ranked in increasing order if you double click it again it switches it around and the largest one is first okay so let's click it again and put it in increasing order and now i'll show you the value of enumerate so we're opening up the calculator again and we're going to create a new variable and that um, let's call it under five rank r and k and it's going to be integer because ranks are not real numbers and we're going to put it right next to our rate here so before a 5 to 19 again first it's a blank line we go back to our calculator and we go to special and we go enumerate and so what is this going to do is going to create a new variable that is the rank of each observation for the proportion of under five going from low to high okay so if you do apply this rank one two three and so forth now why is that useful because the original ranking is not in the order of any given variable the original ranking you can get it here oh i messed it up okay well we'll do it again well uh this is the rank right and it's very easy see now we don't have to add a variable we'll, we'll just use the same one okay now it's correct so now if i go here then you see that the first observation is actually ranked 14. so anytime you need i mean i know this is clunky but it's actually pretty powerful so anytime you want the rank of a variable you sort it you do enumerate that adds a new variable with the rank order integer numbers and then you can work with the ranks if you want to work with the ranks, right? Okay, so this are two types of functionalities with the calculator. As I mentioned before, um, it's not a super tool, but if you want to do something quick, by all means, use it. Okay. So I'm going to...